It's the Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I go and look at loan plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show for people who are already informed in daily fantasy sports and how these contests operate. If you have any questions related to NASCAR that isn't a stupid question, feel free to show my way at Brandon Cruz DFS on Twitter. Most importantly, take everything here with a grain of salt and use your best judgment when making entries. Initially, if you have a gambling addiction, that's not my problem. Let's look at the Xfinity Series at the Daytona Road Course in this episode here first and foremost go to raceforthepries.com to get the fancy nascar spreadsheet that i use and that you need to be using as well all the information you need in one location it streamlines the process of information of, of information gathering of research everything in a week like i had where i've been home i had a power outage i got to do everything in one day it helps me out tremendously it'll help you out he doesn't give you Linus, but he gives you all the tools you need to make wise decisions, to make smart decisions. Go to race four, the number four, theprize.com to go ahead and get that sheet for the month of August. And let's look at how we want to approach Daytona. I'm torn. I'm really torn. I I have a few interesting ways to approach this. I got to choose one since I'm doing my single entries for the rest of the year. That, that was yet again. If, if you're not doing that, if you're not considering doing single entries or not even single entry tournaments, or just making one lineup for each slate in each series, that has worked wonders for me this year. I, I advise you to try it out. If, if you don't want to do it for the cup series, try it out for the Trek series, try it out for the Xfinity series this weekend. Um, Maybe not this weekend, because we got a lot of unknowns. we got a lot of chaos that could happen here. Uh, so first of all, what kind of race do we think we're going to have at this Daytona road course? Whether it's the Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, the Cup Series, whatever way you go, I think all three races are going to focus on that. Whether they're clean and precise and calm, or whether they're chaos-filled, wreck-fest, you know, random lineups are going to be optimal types of situations. So we got to choose and determine which argument, which option, what way we want to go. I'm probably going to go and lean more on this is going to be a cluster. If you look at the Arca series that practiced earlier today, which I'm waiting, which I'm ra- I'm waiting for them to run, but they're currently under rain delay. If you look at the practice they had, which is the only NASCAR series to have practice, they had to cancel practice before it was official because only a certain amount of cars went out. Some guys didn't want to go out. Some guys were running 24 seconds off the pace just to understand the track. And we had three guys wreck in the practice session. And this is a series who only has 22 cars at this at this track this weekend. Now, I understand the Arkham Menard series is not the, the pinnacle of motorsports. And um, it isn't the best of the best, but... Look, if that's not an omen, if that's not an example of what we might see uh, from the NASCAR regulars, I I don't know what is. This is a week that I want to focus primarily on place differential. I I really want to focus on the road course ringers because there's two things that that you want to look at road courses that determine who you want to go with. And that's one, that's equipment, and two, that's experience. And... Last week at Road America showed that experience can can change everything. Look at Preston Partis, for example. Race for Mario Goslin in a 36 car. That was a contender for the victory. Some things change at the end. If Maybe if we don't have all those uh, restarts at the end, it might go Preston Partis' way. Uh, but he's a guy who is overachieving, who has been dominant in that car last week, and, and that's the same thing. Andy Lally, for example, Another example, I mean, these guys are far too cheap. They're guys that I want to focus on over, you know, people like uh, Cindric and all these other guys. I mean, look, I want to focus on road course ringers and people who have experience at this track. Uh, if you have the Fantasy NASCAR spreadsheet, Pierce has linked a article from checkeredflag.com um, talking about all the ringers enlisted for the nascar series this weekend it's a quick read it's easy to to understand oh this guy does this oh this guy does that so go there uh if not i'll kind of mention some of the guys i want to focus on here i'm not going to mention them all so if you have the sheet you have that if you don't well you can find it out search it google it or whatever but 
I, I, I'm going to really focus on the road course ringers this weekend. Let's start off looking at the starting grid for the Xfinity Series in this race. So we got Cindric, Briscoe, Gregson, Chastain, Haley, Andy Lally, Annette, Sieg, Harrison Burton, and Brandon Jones are starting top 10. Now we got this stupid, stupid, stupid new qualifying procedure, which I think really kills. It really hurts DFS, and it really pins you down when we get back to the regular mile and a half, the regular intermediate tracks that we go to week in and week out. The road course, it's not going to be that hard. We're, we're focusing on place differential to begin with. We're not focusing on the big guns. But when we get to the, the 1.5 miles, I mean, this is going to destroy DFS as we know. This is going to kill DFS all over again, just like the lack of practice did in, back in June when they came back. And uh, I'll, I'll talk more about that when we get to those tracks. But uh, looking at this, who, who do I like in the top 10? Andy Lally. That's it, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm going to focus on place differential. I know Austin Cindric probably has the best. Well, and, and Austin Cindric's ran this track before. But look, I think everybody's going to focus on Austin Cindric just like they did last weekend. And yes, he did end up winning. He led 19 laps, but he only scored 56 points. There were guys that outscored him. There were guys that were safe for plays. And Cindric got lucky. I mean, he had cautions come in. He had a lot of stuff help him out. The the rain section of the Road America race really helped him out. Um, I don't think Cindric wins this weekend. I, I think it's another guy. I thought that last weekend. But, you know, I think Cindric is going to have far too much ownership to really focus on. And so the only guy I want to look at in the top 10 is Andy Lally. You know, he's he far too cheap. He showed us last week what that 02 car can do, what he can do in that car. I mean, this is his wheelhouse. Road America was a perfect example. This race is, if this is not in his wheelhouse, there is not a track within Andy Lally's wheelhouse that I want to focus on. Looking outside the top 10, we got A.J. Allmendinger, Preston Pardis, Brandon Brown, Josh William, Herbst, LeBay, Allgaier, Clements, Blake, and Mike Wallace. This is an area that I love, that I want to attack in. I want to focus on A.J. Allmendinger. He's starting 11th. He's the most expensive guy on DK, but he offers you place differential. He's going to be fighting for the win. I love him. I love Preston Pardis starting 12th. Far too cheap, like I said. Uh, Brandon Brown. Not too crazy on, but Josh Williams, Riley Herbst, Alex LeBay. These are guys I think are interesting plays. More specifically, you know, Josh Williams and, and Riley Herbst. Don't think a lot of people are going to go there. That might be a place you want to pivot to. Uh, if you look at Alex LeBay, I talked about it last week, but this is where they were cheating. And why? is I don't know how they won the appeal. I think that's BS. That is BS they won that appeal because that was illegal testing that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life was NASCAR um, letting them win the appeal because they they brought this car I don't care what anyone says this car that they're racing this weekend was ran was, was already tested he has practice if you want to go with that narrative which I probably will which I'll look at I think Alex LeBay starting 16th is where you want to go. He at least has some practice on this on this track. That's most likely at least the same chassis that he took to the SCCA or SCC race the, uh, a couple weeks back. I think that's a bunch of BS how they won that um, argument. That's so stupid because you know uh, you know for a foul you know for a fact Alex LeBay and Mario Goslin were cheating. They were freaking cheating, and just because they had, you know, a one-year-old car, you know, a one-year-old chassis, a NASCAR chassis, I mean, that's crap. It's a bunch of crap, uh, and that also opens an un, that's, that opens an unnecessary can of worms, because I guarantee you, we're going to start seeing big teams, Stuart Haas Racing, uh, Hendrick Motorsports, Junior Motorsports, I don't care what series it's in, you're going to start seeing these, these teams entering SCCA races with these stock cars and blah 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 and they're gonna be it, it's gonna I guarantee you next year we're gonna see a freaking mess of this or going to the Roval it's gonna be a mess anyway but I like I like Alex LeBay because they cheated Justin Allgaier starting 17th a guy who's done very well at the road course bad break last week at Road America got dumped hit 
hit, 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 you know, for all these places being like, we got to be safer. Like, there's a lot of concrete walls out there that race cars keep finding. Uh, and that destroyed, that destroyed the front end of Newman's car. Um, but yeah, that was a vicious hit. Uh, destroyed a car. So, uh, but, but I don't mind playing Justin Allgaier starting 17th. Jeremy Clements starting 18th. You know, he's not a bad play either. Uh, a guy who does very well at the road courses, a guy who does better than uh, his average uh, versus, you know, he, he does better in road courses than 1.5 miles on average. I don't mind him at all. Josh Balicki, a guy, yet again, who showed how good he is at the road courses. Starting 19th, I like him. Mike Wallace finished 24th in both the road course races. I didn't have to go Mike Wallace. I thought I would last weekend when I was thinking about punting him. Uh, but, you know, finished 24th. Running all right. Going to run again. Starting 20th. I like him. Stefan Light. Don't mind him at all in the 61 car. Tommy Joe Martins. Don't mind him starting 22nd in the 44 car. Daniel Hemrick starting 23rd. I don't mind him either. You know, he offers place differential upside. He's in a good car. He can carry that, you know, junior motorsports charm at Daytona uh, on a road course. I don't care what anyone says. Not interested in Jesse Little. Not too big on Joe Graff Jr. Kyle Weatherman, you know, starting 26th. Hey, you know, anything can happen. Matt Snyder starting 27th. A guy who ran... You know, well, last weekend until he was destroyed, until he got in that wreck, that might, um, you know, burn some people and might not want to, people might not want to go back to Matt Snyder this weekend, starting 27th. I don't mind him at all. He was running better than I thought he was going to. Just got caught up in the wreck. Jeffrey Unhart starting 28th and with the JD Motorsports car. Don't mind him. Earl Bammer, uh, a sports car racer in an RCR 21 car. I don't mind him. Uh, I mean, I think he's a great place. Scott Heckert. In the 78 car, probably won't go to him, but, you know, proved last weekend he's not horrible. Vanderwall, nope. Jade before, why not? You know, another road course guy, another guy who is underpriced on DraftKings, another guy that I think is worth a look at 7500 bucks. You know, you can you can make him work. Ba BJ McLeod, I'm not really interested. Bailey Curry, not too interested. Well, actually, Bailey Curry, they had, an, they had a motor issue last weekend. Uh, and only completed a lap. Uh, I assume they got that fixed. So starting 34th, you know, people are going to look and be like, oh, he blew a motor last weekend. He DNF'd. Well, you know, it was a motor issue. I'm pretty sure they got that fixed. I wouldn't be surprised if they, uh, you know, actually end up running well. Don't mind him. Chad Fitchup starting 35th in a good situation. Ran well last weekend. Ran well enough to catch my attention to where I was like, wow. You know, oh, he's out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, I gotta pause this. Alright, sorry about that, I was, um, like I said, I'm doing this all Friday, getting everything squared away. Um, I, was, I was looking at an old entry list, and I uh, just happened to be on DraftKings, uh, Chad Fitchum was listed out, went ahead and looked at it, and the uh, Trans Am series veteran Bobby Rizuz, 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 uh he'll be driving the number 13 uh, this weekend. Is he even in this player pool let me look i want to see if they added him he is oh my god and he's six grand you know a, a veteran in, in, in a, really that's awesome brandon goldvik in the 26 car that's awesome too i i mean i like everybody on here i i love the road course ringers i love um and then you got harold Harold Crumbs in the 66 car starting last. I mean, this is a, this is a who's who of road course ringers, and this is a who's who of, of people to pick for DFS. So now that I just went through the whole grid and told you about, you know, 25 guys I'm really interested in, I think it's worth not playing anybody in the top 10 and just chasing place differential. And you have more than enough road course guys to take a gut shot on. If you feel like you like someone, go for it. Uh, I, I imagine that Earl in the 21 car will probably be the most popular because he's in a he's in a good car. Uh, probably Preston Partis and Al Andy Lally will gain ownership, but I don't mind playing them. If anything, Andy Lally would probably be the first guy I'd fade from that, but that's not out of the question. If you made just a lineup with nothing but road course guys, I that I like that. You know, the only guys I probably would look out for would be Scott Heckert, 
I wasn't really impressed by him. Josh Balicki, I know he ran well last week, but I think people see that and they hop on it. I'd rather get off those guys and just focus on the people making their, you know, their quote unquote first NASCAR start or their first start this year or these no names that all you know is they run road courses and 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 that's it. I mean, that, that's how I really want to look at it for tournament strategy and lineup construction. I'm going to look at it from a base of, you know, I'm a casual, like I said, I'm tr- I try and predict what casuals do. So let's say I'm a casual and I play all guy or Hemrick and, Bar- and Earl in the RCR car, which I think will be a popular starting point because if most people make, most people hand make their lineups on the DraftKings website and they automatically see, oh, Justin Allgaier, he's good. You know, he got wrecked, bad break last weekend. And they see, oh, you know, Dan Hemrick in a junior motorsports car starting 23rd, he'll be good. Oh, Earl, who's this guy? Oh, he's racing for RCR. Well, you know, Richard Childress, I mean, he he went from Earnhardt to, you know, to, to Austin Dillon, so he wants to get a good win at this point, so we got to go Earl, you know, I, which I think that's how most people start their lineups. Or they'll see Brandon Goldvick starting 37th, then use one of those guys. Either way, I think a lot of lineups are going to have two to three guys, 9,000 or more, where I don't think you got to go that way. I really don't. I think the only guy who, I mean, there's three guys you can make arguments for. A.J. Allmendinger, Earl, and Brandon. I think those are the only guys over 9,000 that you you should use. I don't think you got to really focus on Algar. I don't think you got to focus on Hamrick. I don't think you got to focus on Cindric, Briscoe, Gregson, Haley, Chastain, these this is not how I want to approach this 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 race. I'm gonna probably build my lineups from nine thousand down and see what lineup is projected for the most, see how I like it, how I think ownership's gonna be. I think that's how I think that's an easy way to be different. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people d- duplicating lineups like that because people hate people hate leaving salary on the table. I don't care if this is Daytona. I don't care if it's, you know, projected to be a bad race or a wreck fest or whatnot. If somebody creates a lineup with people left, people like under, you know, $7,400 or whatever, and they see $8,500 left, they're going to be like, well, you know, I can take this guy off and I can afford, I can afford Allgaier and then I can afford, I can afford Cindric. And I think Cindric is a bad play. I think he's a waste of salary i think he's a waste of time and i think he's a waste of a spot in your lineups focus on the road course guys focus on the people who have experience at this track who have experience um racing on tracks that have massive elevation changes because you're going to be going from flat to going through the banking uh in the corners to dealing with the tight chicanes um one on the back straightaway and one coming out of nascar turn four Focus on these road course guys who do this week in and week out or multiple times a year. Don't waste your time chasing, uh, you know, the, the, the Xfinity Series regulars that, you know, have looked good in the past or, you know, should run well, like Haley, like Chastain, like Briscoe, like Gregson, like Cindric. I don't, I don't like them. I don't like those plays. Uh, and I think even if even if Cindric wins, I think he can be outscored by people. You know, I'm I'm going to approach this focusing on road course wing, ringers. That that's how I gotta look at, it. especially if we get rain. Uh, you know, this is gonna be a wild weekend. I think there's gonna be a lot of crashes, and if there's gonna be a lot of crashes, it's going to be the guys who are Xfinity Series regulars who are making mistakes, who aren't used to these types of tracks. That's how I want to approach it. That's what I want to look at it, focusing on on road course ringers. That that's it. That that's that's my mentality this weekend, and uh, that's about it. We'll catch you in the next video, focusing on truck series.